Hi, I'm James D'Souza, a psychology teacher. Hey, and I'm Willem Vanderhorst, a brand strategist. Every week we go on wild tangents to answer one of life's big questions. Our theme this season is career. And today's question is, is building a career in something important and worthwhile? Is building a career in something important and worthwhile? Yeah. It's funny, it really feels like something that we've talked about before. Uh, it, it's funny because it's long, but at the same time, I'm not really sure. It feels kind of, kind of like kind of like vague. I mean, the first episode of the season, even though we do talk about career in the opening for the season, mm-hmm. and obviously what a career is. So building a career in something being important and worthwhile. I think I think there's a whole body of looking at it from a craftsman perspective or from a, you know, mastery, the whole story about doing something for 10,000 hours Mm -hmm. or among the shared videos. uh, We talked about the that short documentary about the sword maker in Japan and Jiro dreams Mm -hmm. of sushi. So there's very much a Japanese idea, but not only Japanese, there's a craftsman idea that you hone your craft during the course of a lifetime, which is the course of a career. You get better at something the more you do it. Um, and so there's just quite a simple and obvious answer there on not, I mean, just direction to look at the question to say that absolutely. The, and the, the uh, what is worthwhile is the satisfaction, perhaps pleasure uh, of seeking something and knowing that you're getting better at it uh, and that you're setting yourself goals to get better at what it is that you're doing and we're assuming that this is probably something that you're getting paid for because we're calling it a career so it's not just a hobby the hobbies can function in the same exact way of course mm-hmm. um i think now presumably if it's a career you've done it a lot you're spending a lot more time on it uh, and you're getting paid for it so you're a professional at whatever it is that you're doing mm-hmm but there's also the the side that um, the um, the kind of craft that we're talking about exists less and less. So there's of course a lot of service jobs or office jobs that you can get better at, but there's also a lot of different jobs that people perform that are you know, I've, okay, I'm just going to be mean to begin with, but that are mind numbing. Yeah, that are that are that are either repetitive that are, I don't, I'm not, I don't mean to say that they're not worthwhile. They can be worthwhile and people can find a lot of pleasure in them. Uh, but it, they're not necessarily something that you keep doing and get better at. Although, I mean, there's multiple ways to look at this. You will get better at your job, yes. Um, mm-hmm. But is it something that you're producing something that it gets better continuously that you're improving over time? Maybe and you've not. used, if you've you've used that, craft, word, yeah. that word craft, I yeah. think is is important you used it a couple of times the idea of that you're creating something and then as you do it more and more if you're getting paid for it you get better at it and maybe it becomes something worthwhile versus the what you said about some jobs that can be mind-numbing that you do get better at but there's no sense of craftsmanship in it yeah i mean if you're flipping burgers uh for a big fast food chain Mm-hmm. it's a job you might enjoy it and i, I was listening to a podcast episode uh, of this american life not long ago called essential which was really great mm-hmm. all about this notion of essential workers that was essential that was essentially that was created last year uh oh during the pandemic you mean during the pandemic well which we're still in <laughs> yeah there is this notion of essential workers and what does that represent and the uh it's it's a great episode of this american life and there's one section where they talk to this guy who is uh, fairly old, flips burgers mm-hmm. at a big burger chain, and really enjoys his job, enjoys his, his job for like tens of years. I can't remember how long. He's been working there for a long time. Mm-hmm. Lives in walking distance from the place he works, likes his co-workers, the pay's mm-hmm. all right. He mm-hmm. enjoys his job. Mm-hmm. Um, is he getting better at flipping burgers? Perhaps. Does that make any difference to the people buying the standardized burger that where you have a process in, in play anyway? Not particularly. Um, 
or or you could argue that, I guess. Uh, the point he was making in the whole TV show was that it was about him realizing and being upset for the first time ever about his job that he actually really enjoyed in the past. Yeah. About being uh, considered to be an essential an, an essential worker. And um, well, it was McDonald's anyway. I don't because I'm about to talk about something public anyway. It's it's in the episode, and um, McDonald's pre- created this whole program to uh, give free breakfast to people who are healthcare workers and essential workers. Okay, but then the people in the restaurants were also from some other outlets considered to be essential workers. They didn't get any free breakfast. They didn't get any other benefits. They didn't get anything else. So, so, you, so that situation of who's considered essential. Mm-hmm. who's the considered essential and making the breakfast for the essential workers mm-hmm. would therefore be essential right who knows no they are everybody in restaurants was well if the restaurants were kept open those were considered essential and so but he was like but i don't get I, my company is not giving me anything over and above to thank me for my service mm-hmm. um so Anyway, that, that's a slight tangent, but you know, actually, I, I need to say, as in a complete tangent, uh, yeah. we're we're obviously testing for the first time our opening line for the podcast and getting yeah. and diving into the question faster, which has yeah. merit, uh, I believe. But also, it feels weird to not just chat a little bit to get warmed up. I don't Do know. You think? We, I think so. I felt I felt that. No, you didn't feel that. I did a bit, but. It felt it felt abrupt for me to dive dive in, and I, I understand. I think for the people listening, actually anybody listening or watching this, I'd love to have your comment or questions on. Okay, what does that sound like? Is it better? I think it's probably better for everybody if we dive straight into the question. But I think for the conversation I have with you, it's cool to be able to to chat a little bit and warm up, which might not have to be before we set up the question. But I'm just thinking out loud about our our setup. But I, obviously. You've seen if and, you've come across if you've come across the two uh, short setup episodes we just published, you've yeah. seen or you're seeing perhaps, or if you haven't, I'm just telling you now uh, that we worked over the summer of 2021 to put a little, little bit more structure into the podcast, so that you've heard that we have a a, a seasonal arc and theme to uh, to our well to our season to all about career and the question for the episode, which is the usual format. Uh, so we're going to have the next this one and the next nine after that for 10 episodes we're going to talk about career questions sorry we are wanted to say and it's (laughs) i did no all all i was going to say was i quite like being dropped in it and i think it's also worth reminding and you did this already you already mentioned jiro dreams of sushi some of the sources that we're going to be constantly referring to as we go through season three yeah. with this theme of career but the the question is quite challenging because it's got two kind of judgment words in there worthwhile and important yeah. and it's and this idea of building a career and i really like the example you used actually mm-hmm. this guy is doing what might be considered to be a really kind of menial job the but he, he gains it. he's clearly gaining some satisfaction from it and he he yeah. can for himself now like that i know people who've had lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of different jobs yeah and they've and there isn't kind of a theme to it and when when i hear the word career i i think of like depth of expertise in one particular area that's what i think about first which is why i was talking about that craft area first which yeah. doesn't necessarily need to be about crafts it can be about something else yeah um, i mean like i consider myself this is going to sound so pretentious <laughs> but i'm going to say it anyway i consider myself a bit <laughs> of a, a cr- i think using data has an element of craftsmanship to it. I can't believe I said that. Just I, I more, think please. I'm... I want to hear more about that. And I don't know why you <laughs> can't believe you're not you're saying that. I think I because think I feel like, like it's... delving into data as you know certainly needs some level of skill knowledge. And but I I think it's because I'm known for that in my job as a teacher. I'm known as the the data guy. But the what's really shifted. What, what's me an example? A... What kind of data do you go and look at? 
I, I, I will get to that in a second. Okay. The, what's happened over the last kind of probably five years, five or six years in being a teacher is that the, and in teaching is data has become really important, but what I've discovered that I really like doing is going into it and then using it to make, make a point. So to go to answer your question about what, for example, what, so I might look at a year group and I'll look at all the pupils in a year group and I'll look at their grades on their subjects across all their subjects. How are they doing versus their targets? What patterns are there? What does it say about the year group as a whole? Are the year group struggling or are particular subjects? Is it, is it a subject thing? Is it a, the, every, if everyone's, if, if like, for example, when certainly when pupils start their A-levels, they come in expecting that things are going to be easier because they've done, they, maybe they've just done exams, they've just done their GCSEs and they're going to A-levels and there's a jump from GCC mm. to A-level. So they start A-levels thinking they can approach it in the same way as they've done all their exams before. Mm. And then in the first half term, their grades are terrible. And they're all like, well, why? Well, because it's harder. <laughs> and they're not used to that. So I, I can see the pattern. And then another quick example is, the trajectory of students so they they might start here and end up here yeah. but in the middle they might be somewhere here and they all want to be doing really well instantly sure. they want to be getting a grade straight away and i will explain to them it doesn't work like that and equally it doesn't work for the individual some individuals might be the people who can read something and remember it instantly and other people they read it and they need a bit more practice and all of that so I got very good at taking what the numbers are saying and turning it into some kind of worthwhile story for them to get their heads around to inspire them. And I love doing that. And I think there's an element of craftsmanship and skill and development and progression and mastery that I'm really interested in. And I've become, become that person that people go to for, what does this mean? What does this say? How do you do that thing on Excel? Uh, I get that a lot, but I, th I think that's what initially that word career, I think creates that idea of doing the same thing and getting better at it. Yeah. Which it doesn't, when we looked at the definition in the intro episode of the, all the things that you do that you typically get paid for, presumably as a string mm -hmm. of things that you get paid more money for so that there's a, an upward trend over the course of a, a lifetime or a career. Um, but there's also the idea of everything that we've been talking about, which is a, what you were saying on, on improving, on mastery, uh, which is different from what you said as a string of jobs. And I mm. think you get you get access to that, not necessarily, but I think there is a correlation with need, with a, a education status, with, I mean, the level of, so how badly and how desperate are you to feed yourself and your children? Uh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. So when you, and I, so I'm just thinking of Maslow's, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Mm -hmm. uh, if you think of Maslow's hierarchy of needs with a famous pyramid with at the bottom, there's like, you know, the basic needs of food and shelter and everything else. If you are at the level that you really need to have food and shelter, uh, you'll take the thing that gives you that. You're not really you thinking, whatever. not necessarily thinking at that point about the higher level of like satisfaction. And I mean, satisfaction is like self-actualization, which can be, through uh getting better at one particular thing uh one particular thing that you get paid for is what i mean when we're talking about the craftsmanship okay mm -hmm. um so when you're talking about somebody who has a string of like somebody who lives through a, a lot of different jobs there's tends to be not always but there tends to be a correlation with people who are from a lower socioeconomic background or and or lower or and or just had tough times happen like mm. that's happened to a lot of people last year with the pandemic there was like a massive emergency that was completely unplanned and people who have a lot of money and a lot of privilege and a lot of stuff in the bank that's it's you know it's not cool for them but they have a lot of money in the bank so they're they're, they're fine if in the case of a major emergency mm -hmm. unlike a lot of people who are living day to day or month to month 
with the job they have and they're in a and it like if they were in a category of jobs that there were no longer jobs or the shops were closed for three months etc then they had no money coming in mm. and if you have no money coming in you're worrying about like how are you going to pay for rent and how are you going to feed yourself and your children so the idea of a worthwhile and important career over time doesn't like probably takes a back seat compared to the emergency of having to feed yourself um, i, I what do you not think? always and it depends because uh sorry go ahead D yeah not always and it depends on the situation people are in but the i was going to throw in there a link to one of the one of our seasonal resources that we talk mm -hmm. about what do you think alan watts would say about people in that position so if yes oh, well, I'm, there's I <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I guess so, you have something in mind. Go ahead. I, I kind of have something in mind. So the you're talking about like you got to put food on the table. Maslow's hierarchy yes. of needs. You'll and take so I guess you I guess the point to finish that is to say that there are cases where uh, it's not all that important and worthwhile, or not important anyway. It takes a back seat. So that's a way to answer. Probably, maybe not worthwhile perhaps but maybe sometimes you're like well i have to go with what i need right now rather than what's worthwhile to separate both words of course you know there's you know you could totally make a uh, a venn diagram so that there's like stuff that are overlapping oh venn diagrams but the i wanted to throw in adam watts the alan watts video yes. about finding what you really want to do and it, it's very easy to me it's very esoteric it's very kind of philosophical kind of i mean like... it's it's one that's been turned around and i recommend you guys uh, so anyway he talks about just real real I, I don't know i want to be careful about paraphrasing every time but for anybody who hasn't seen it you should go and check it out uh yeah. the links are in the the, ep the episode intro but it's the one where he talks about what do you desire and and it's it's uh, he he's referring back to what's going on in his classrooms with uh, university students. Mm. Now, I think it's also important to remember that you're that you are in the kind of position that I just mentioned. Yeah. If you are in a position to start to stop for a few minutes to think about what you desire, and you're probably in university, and you're a student, you're fed. You, I, let's assume, even if it's just pasta, because or noodles, whatever, because you you're a student, you don't have a lot of money. Even if it's that. Um, you are in a position to, to look upwards, or I mean, up in the pyramid of uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And the whole idea of Maslow's hierarchy of need is to, is to say that, it's, and it, by the way, it's interesting when you look at the, some of the text from his stuff, I, I'd like to read more, but I read an article not long ago, last year, actually, at the end of last year about the pyramid and, and, uh, and he wrote that and he created it while he lived through the second, the both world wars, yeah, uh, the Great Depression, and it's not a linear. Yeah, it's not a linear progression. It's not like once you have one solved, you get to the next one, and then you get to the top of the pyramid and you're done. There's always going up and down and back and forth. It's just like any model; it's incomplete and it's imperfect. Particularly when you're trying to modelize, like to model a human life and what uh, yeah. needs and actual self actualization might look like. But anyway, uh, there's a lot of different areas that are possible at once all the idea is to say that there are a lot of things that are possible such as creativity such as play such as self-actualization mm. when you are fed when you don't have to worry about where you're sleeping tomorrow where mm. like all of those things are worries that take a lot of mental time and there's a bunch of other research about brain activity and um and neural and neuroscience that show the same thing that have shown that from a um, from a neuro neuroscience perspective and a brain activity perspective as well, but it makes total sense. If you're worried, you're not really thinking about well, this is the kind of thing that I like to do that makes me happy or that makes me fulfilled. And um, how do you carve time to be able to do to get to a point to think about those things? Uh, so I don't know if I'm answering the question, but the the idea of Alan Watts to say look at what you desire. If you get really really good at it, you'll create a market for that rather than to to worry about what is it that is going to make me money and to fit the box for mm -hmm. that? And that money doesn't give, give you happiness and that concern for, you know, what kind of career am I going to do that makes sense, that is going to be reasonable, that uh, makes mm -hmm. money, that is stable, etc. 
not only did he was saying back in the whenever it was 70s 80s uh, 19 well so 40 years ago whatever something like that um he was saying that 40 to 50 years ago i know but the idea that the 80s was 40 years ago still freaks me out i know <laughs> <laughs> um he was Alan saying Watts, that um, 40 50 years ago yeah you were saying yeah yeah, yeah. so it, it's still it's still I, I believe extremely valid to say that you chase money and money is all you're going to get and it mm. so we chase it in the hope of actually being happy and i don't i don't say it's not it's wrong to chase money we need it it's nice to have some money it's it's useful and it's certainly worthwhile um but He's saying that if you get really good at something, you'll find a market for it. You'll be able to market your skills mm. rather than trying to conform to a certain area, which is the traditional vision of a career. Uh, and you have your mom and dad and you we, we talked about this before, but like to use a stereotype of uh, you coming from a South Indian family. Uh, I'm imagining, and we talked about this, that you, and I think you talked about it on the podcast, but it really, there's it's, a stereotype that there's a lot of family member that wanted you to be in one or two professions. Yeah, and I'm reminded of the intro episode we did for this season about mm -hmm. our very different career paths where you did a lot of different things and you explored a lot of different things and you, you came to this brand strategist, whereas mine was much more linear, go to school, do well, go to uni, do well, start something. I yes, I changed careers mm. to become a teacher, but it was like, yeah, there was this, there was a certain expectation slash pressure on me yeah. to choose a career that made sense in the society yeah. that we're in. And uh, the two minute video from Yuval Noah Harari and, and a lot of the stuff he talks about, he's not mm. he's far from being the only one, is to talk about the fact that this is going to be less and less true. And there's yep. going to be a lot more need to reinvent oneself over the course of a career as jobs change. So I'm, you know, for, for like honing a skill over a lifetime, I think about my dad who was a trader and, you know, he's a salesman, trader and Wall Street and in Europe. And there's a lot of skill, know-how calls mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. to do that. But that job didn't exist anymore and it's not existed for, I mean, the job exists, but the job is completely different. All the skill and know-how he acquired over the course of a career is useless you don't for you that for that job now that job is mm -hmm. mostly replaced by extremely performed like high performing mathematical algorithms so the people who do that job now are somehow they're trying to find the same kind of profile of people who want to get better at are not so super competitive mm. but they're math and algorithm whiz whizzes That's uh, they're not their their skill i mean they they might be good talkers but the skill that my dad had to know uh, and to memorize everything, because that's one thing that his, my grandfather, his dad, that I didn't get to meet, but was very important to him as an import export of uh, a merchant. He was, was buying and selling uh, bananas mostly. Uh, but it's it, it's uh, the Netherlands. So there, yeah. there's a lot of uh, um, yeah. commodities um, and exporting them. For, and so anyway, Going on to the market, and so what was super important for my grandfather to teach my father was to mental arithmetic, yeah, to and to remember things, which was very important on the floors in the what the kind of the kind of Wolf of Wall Street environment that my dad worked in. Hmm. To go chat with people, to get on the phone, to remember hmm. all the numbers and the positions of all hmm. the clients and all the that was important, and hmm. he was good at that. Now that is completely like that. If you show up over there and saying, "Well, yeah, I'm good. I'm good on the phone, and I remember all the things," they're like, "Yeah, I don't care at all. You need to code, and you need to, you need to be like way a whole other level of mathematics." Um, I didn't know that about your dad because you're you speaking about your dad reminded me about my dad, uh -huh. who spent over thirty years working in the NHS as a lab technician. And when I remember when he started, it was very much about knowing the chemistry and knowing what test to do when and knowing what test had to be done for diabetes uh, what, what reagents do you need to test for certain hormones chemicals bloods whatever right yeah. but over time the computer everything's become automated like it's the that idea of <laughs> I, I, I think artificial intelligence is going to come into that area like here's the blood sample the machine will do it all and it will output whether someone's gonna 
it, what the chances of someone having diabetes or not or has diabetes or not yeah. it's that it's that kind of streamlining and my dad was involved in it i remember him telling me a story about how big the computer was and mm -hmm. how much the guy who was in charge of running the lab techs the tech tech kind of stuff got was doing i think he was doing a phd or something and he managed to get hold of some old computers that were you know at the time the size of a room yeah and how much and if he hadn't done that then then the hospital that my dad worked in is actually my local hospital it's one of the it's one of the best in the country actually they they wouldn't have pushed technology forward in that hospital if it wasn't for that yeah. so it's and it's almost like he's retired at the you know he retired like 10 years ago or whatever at the right time yeah. because because so much of it is getting automated by machines yeah whereas my dad did my dad burned out see so wow. are you going back to the question of building a career is it worthwhile and important mm. well the career he built at the time was I, I i can't speak for him on how worthwhile it was i think he enjoyed it when he enjoyed it it was also an enormous amount of work and uh and burning the candle by both ends of a lot of mm. drinking a lot of partying because it, it was a bit of wolf of wall street it was new york in the 80s mm. um so there was, you know, of course, it was like probably not as extreme as what you saw as DiCaprio doing Wolf of Wall Street, but it was that kind of environment he was in. Uh, and, uh, but his dream was to open a restaurant. Oh, wow. And I was going to say important because he had four kids and, uh, and you know, and he, and he like, I, I guess he built a certain standard of living and he had to keep up with it mm. and take care of his wife and his kids. Uh, so there's a lot of that going on. And then later, much so much later, after we moved back to France, th there's a bunch of other things that happened. So it's not, um, don't take this as a analyzing exactly what happened and how it was for him, because I don't really know. What I do know is that there's a certain point where he'd moved jobs to earn more money and then lost the job because um, there was just a big round of redundancies and he was past 40 and he was just exhausted. Right. And then he he was just really burned out. So he he, he went at it for as long as he could. But you also know he pushed it past. I think I think this is my interpretation. I don't really know this for sure, mm -hmm. but he wanted to stop multiple times, and then he was just caught in having to keep doing that to be able to to keep up with the with the credits, with the houses, with the standard of living right. they built, with everything else, by while being not enjoying it anymore and being way past enjoying it and being super tired and things were changing it's a young man's kind of gig and uh, environment because they it's mm. very very demanding from an energy perspective mm -hmm. and i think he and i think that was also mixed in with he didn't really want it anymore and we had moved back to france originally in 80, 1985 for him to open a restaurant which didn't happen in the end so again this is me kind of like doing doing pop psychology but i think he kind of always somewhere was okay with it but resented the fact that it never happened so I, I don't know of course there was a bunch of other circumstances that happened around the fact that he was laid off from his job and a few other things that happened job wise before but after he was that he had no he did not have the inclination the energy or probably the possibility of finding something else at the same level of pay anymore mm -hmm. it's just you know you're done at that point i think uh, it's interesting to look at that I'm contrasting it with my dad, who was very clear about choosing something like the NHS, stable mm -hmm. institution, doing something that was choosing. And he passed that on to me, choose a career that's stable so that you you have a the income coming in. Don't take any risks so yeah. that you can provide whatever you need to provide. It wasn't about... Yes desire or fulfillment or doing something you thought you were good at although my dad is obsessed with science and science is his thing it just happened to be that he chose something that or got into something that he yeah. matched his skill set i'm but pretty it, sure you there's still a lot of parents today that talk to their kids in those yeah. in those terms my yeah. parents were not like that it, well and so far as they never recommended like i heard it from a lot of other people but i didn't hear it from my parents and that's not really how i was raised mm. uh, for good or ill, which I guess my, my career says something about um, about that. I, I, I didn't follow the same kind of stable career that you're that you're doing. 
And it I can be a straight a, for, jacket. And that's one of the things I yeah. admire about you. You're free spirit. I think it's great. Yeah, but I mean, each it comes with also its own straight jacket, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but it's, to keep on the, to keep on topic with the question, is it is it is building a career worthwhile and important? Right, that's the question. Yeah, yeah. It's, so I think we 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 covered a bunch of stuff on on the importance of it. Sometimes it's not so much about the importance as the need, as like I just mm -hmm. need to get this done, and if it takes me it, wherever this takes me, that feeds my family or feeds myself. Mm -hmm. uh i think we by mentioning the alan watts thing to talk about the fact that it does take some effort to uh to think about what it is that you want and it is a difficult question i think we we it's not appreciated enough that it is a difficult question and, it, and it's a question that is worth spending time on that yes. when your attention even if you are you have a job you're fed you have whatever you need that's fine um the 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 environment that we live in today that is constantly requiring and requesting our attention and i'm i'm an, one of the horrible engineers or service or in service of this type of stuff when i'm working on advertising that is taking people's attention away um mm -hmm. but there's also just if you're mostly passive and by passive i mean passively consuming what facebook and instagram or TikTok are serving to you on your phone passively or reacting to responding to emails that are being sent to you passively mm -hmm. watching absorbing netflix stuff which i do love right it's not wrong to say or or youtube videos whatever it is that you're watching or this <laughs> actually <laughs> uh really um it's all passive and to think about what it is that you want takes requires i think it really requires it needs you or one it needs it needs you to it needs you to to stop all that and to actively think and to go through the effort of thinking and then writing it typing it writing it doing something or having a dialogue with somebody else like we're doing helps mm. talking about it with a friend but really like going through the effort of, of thinking okay what is it that i want what is important to me when it comes to a mm. career when it comes to anything else mm -hmm. and worthwhile i think there's a lot of stuff that is brought to you by uh, society or imposed massively on on you on like what is worthwhile or not which is also why it was great to hear recently that episode about the guy who was happy to be flipping burgers he's like yeah it's close to home it's a good job i like the people there yeah. i'm like wow well, okay and i hadn't thought about it that way but yeah um like that it's just it's to think about for yourself what is worthwhile because if you're only referring to your Instagram account and or to your TV, it looks like if you're under the level of one of the Kardashians, you're having a miserable life. And it's easy yeah. to think that way and to compare oneself, which we've talked about before and we'll come back around it. But anyway, it might sound like a silly exercise. Actually, I was talking about that with my brother yesterday. <laughs> so told me about he's, he's cross fingers about to have potential good news or by the time this is uh, published, I think it's okay to say that job wise. But anyway, he was like, yeah, the secret works. Do you know the secret? <laughs> the, the the, thing the was utter, basically, basically utter put it out there. Cheese of, oh yeah, God. Totally. Utter cheese. But you know, I, that was, yeah, it was financed and created by a guy that has one of the most successful kind of personal development seminars around in the world. I didn't know that. Yeah, of course. Uh, by the, I can't remember the name off the top of my head now. Uh, the uh, I know it was written by Rhonda Byrne, isn't it? The Secret. Yeah, but there was all. It was, somebody told me that I didn't check it. I don't. Okay. Uh, but and it's somebody told me about those seminars not long ago again, and I can't remember what it is now. It doesn't matter. Um, anyhow, the whole idea, in which I, be, I I didn't even watch or read the book because somebody told me the sum. Somebody gave me the summary. Basically, it's just like you know, tell the universe what you want. And uh, that's it. But there is, I, so I, I might be paraphrasing the secret. I don't know because I haven't read it or yeah. watched the movie. But, um, but there is an enormous amount of value in spending time to think about what it is that you want. I mean, whether the universe that I agree you with. or not, I don't really know. <laughs> yeah, that I agree with. No, but in the sense that n n being able to have an idea of what you want to create what you want to build where you want to go your direction and thinking about it yeah. it's hard 
but it is. I think I agree with you. I think it is worth and the, while to, doing. To, to finish on, for, on what I do for a living uh, as a strategist, building a strategy requires you defining where it is that you're trying to get to. Yeah. Or what the problem is or what the opportunity is. And that is usually the most difficult thing to do. Yeah. And something that we don't really want to do. It's very difficult because it requires thinking and we're thinking is we're lazy. We're just, uh, let's back to our, we had a bunch of conversations on system one, system two from Daniel Kahneman and thinking fast and slow. The The rational thinking brain takes a lot of energy and doesn't really want to work. We just want to do the things automatically with system one. Um, the uh, Sorry, I, you're going to say something else, I think. I was Well, to well, kind of related, but we're, mm-hmm. we're cognitive misers. We want everything simple. Yeah. We, it's, everyone wants a simple answer. You know, you could be watching this, this podcast, listening to this podcast, wanting a simple answer to the question, is it, is building a career in something worthwhile and important or important and worthwhile, whatever, right? There is no simple answer and never is, but having, I, I, I think you've said a couple of really valuable things about talking with other people about it and discovering for yourself. And yeah. I think the other thing that your career progression illustrates is trying a bunch of stuff and then finding something that you could settle on yeah. that you really wanted to do and grow and develop. And it's, I think one of the things that makes it difficult to choose or build a career is the pressure from parents, from social media, from sure. other people, from our peers. Yeah. And that was something I found really hard to deal with the in choosing yeah. my subject subject for university it was i wanted to i was interested in this i was interested in psychology i mentioned business i want to do that and my grandmother saying they want to be a doctor it was there was and i'm so glad that i resisted i'm so glad that i stuck my neck out and went for it and i think that was that i found that very i found that hard it is I and we, we uh society I guess we parents, et cetera, I I don't have children, but overall put enormous amount of pressure on very young people to figure out what it is they should be doing. And there's another thing, which, which is, even though we talk about the question is of like building a career that's worthwhile, Mm. you don't know until you've done it. That's, and we change over time. So you don't know what is important and worthwhile as well. So having like giving yourself a break, even though I understand that, um, if there is a huge amount of pressure, it's only when you look back at your life and you look at what you've been building. And most of the time you can go, well, I didn't do what I wanted at all. Or, or, or you can go, well, I actually did a lot of cool stuff or I, it worked out and I've just been living my life. Um, so there's, beforehand, I think there's two... you don't know. And, and you change over life yep. and whatever you thought life is going to throw stuff at you one way or another yep. that make it that your choices change uh so from the the very pragmatic and horrible to mention but you know i I don't know you like flipping burgers and you have an accident you lose an arm you can't flip burgers anymore you're so all right well i have to do a whole other thing of relearning how to do life with one arm and then perhaps finding something else that you could be doing that is going to be your activity or career perhaps or just you don't you one day you find you don't really enjoying what you're doing anymore you change careers completely so, or, or we so go back to the Yuval Noah Harari stuff and to say that actually there's going to be a lot of changes. Robotics, automize, automation are going to change a lot of what's going on work-wise. And there's one other idea that's coming through a lot more than it used to, which is that what if you don't need a career to have a good, to lead, to live a good life? Yeah. Well, I think that's also another. Well, that's a whole other question, but you know. Well, yeah, but I think it's in this question: is it is it important and worthwhile to build? Let's not something? answer every question about career in this episode, though. Otherwise, well, are you, it's imp- <laughs> we can't. But that's the whole point of going on tangents. Well, we're it? also going to find out if 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 keeping ten episodes to one topic is or one theme is a good idea or not, or if we're just kind of like talking about the same things over and over. I think there's enough to talk for ten hours. This, uh, oh, I do. I do too. I do want to, you've reminded me of two things. You reminded yeah. me of the, the young, certainly the young people I teach or even the young people I meet in whatever, wherever I meet them, the, they want the answer now. They don't want to try anything and fail. And part of the way you discover is you try it, 
you don't like it so you try yeah. something else yeah. you don't like it then you try something else you love it and 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 it evolves and, and you, it's not a conscious building of a career no. it kind of evolves and you have grows. to go out there and that's one of the things that's difficult is for example the, the students yeah. i was with were interviewing for internships and then for jobs yeah some of them the knew exactly point, what they wanted but they were not getting it yeah so you have to take what you can get almost but the other point is Steve Jobs commencement speech at somewhere or other, he calls it join the dots forward. Yeah. To, which is this idea. You don't know where you where you got to now, you don't know why or how you got there. It's only when you look back, you realize, oh, there was that point that made the difference. And then that point. So now I'm here. So it's learning, it's a bit like in Creativity Inc. He said about trust the process and about trusting. Well, it's kind of trust the process, but it's about the, I think it's more about exploring and finding and discovering and being willing to reflect on yourself and find out, yeah. I really like that. Well, what yeah. about this? And then yeah. going and investigating. But the young people I teach, they want the answer and they want me to tell them. It's human to want the answer. And it's even more so yes. that a young person wants the answer or think there is one. And the fact that we appreciate the, the conversation, we appreciate these conversations, I believe. I mean, we like talking to, to one another, but that the, the world and human beings want there to be a simple answer. Yeah. Just as, you know, we want to berate the politicians to say, you're not giving us a simple answer, but we live in a really complex society. And I really appreciate to delve in the complexities mm. of everything. And there's also the, the whole other, I mean, it, it sounds really silly, but when you're young, you think that somebody else has the answer and you think that other people do. You think that other people have figured out the answer. But you also think that they have the answer for you yeah. when, more often than not, or every time, depending, we could argue that one, you're the only one who has the right answer for yourself. Nobody else is going to give it to you. Everybody else has their own opinion of what is important and valuable and worthwhile and think that you should be doing the same, but that is not appreciating the unique qualities, wants, needs, aspirations mm -hmm. of you. And that's kind of, that circles back to what we keep talking about all the time in every episode on the importance to, of knowing yourself, know thyself. Just as you said earlier, there's some pupils that start uh, 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 on the A levels track after GCSE that, well, I mean, some, some people have more ease with the traditional institution of school as it's designed right now, and some others yep. don't. Yep. Um, so we're all expecting everybody to conform to a certain thing because it's easier to organize a society where things are standardized, but it does, I understand that, but it does remove the idea that we are all very different from one another. We function differently. We have different makeups and there's a lot of standardization that goes on with the algorithms that are understanding us. But anyway, that's, I'm going on another tangent there, but the, uh, again, it's, it's the importance to sit down and say, okay, well, actually, and I know, I know some of the people if they're of your level of like studying pupils are listening to us and won't believe us that they, <laughs> what I say, I don't have answers, but it gave me a huge amount of, which is, I'm still bewildered. It looks like, I'm like, surely this person I'm looking at has the answer. They seem to have figured it out. They seem to have a successful career or, or, or they have, pretending. Or, or in my case, in my case, it could be, you know, because I'm single, I'm like, well, they have a really great family and kids. So they figured out the whole romantic relationship thing. I haven't. <laughs> it's, we, we, yeah, we do want to learn from others who seem to have it figured out. Yeah. There's, and you talk to the person, they're like, what? I have no idea. I'm making it up as I go. Do you know? Like everybody. I, yeah. I, I do want to take us on another tangent very okay. deliberately within the scope of this question about so if we're talking about building a career as you were talking and everything we've been talking about in today's episode i'm reminded of the so much of from on an evolutionary time scale so going mm -hmm. back millions of years yeah that mostly our activity as human beings was survival find yeah. food find shelter survive procreate that's it we didn't yeah. think about career we didn't think about fulfillment we well, didn't think about self-actualization you don't know okay fair enough that's no true. but in truth i was talking about that that's with my true. brother we don't know we have that's no true. idea we don't know maybe there was an hour per day around the fire at the end of the day where everybody was fed where they could talk about those things i don't know it you just, just 
You've just Why completely we, they destroyed were, what I was going to say. We've which been is here good. for 40,000 years. Why wouldn't they talk about that and looking at the stars and they talk about, you know, maybe one day I'll, I don't know what, I don't know what the conversations were, but at the maybe level the of that, there, there's no reason that they wouldn't have those kinds of conversations. They told stories. They told stories about yeah, a lot did. of stuff that That's they true. found. So why wouldn't they stop, talk, think about, you know, maybe tomorrow we'll find the big berry patch and everybody will be fed <laughs> by twelve. I don't know. I don't know what they what they talked about. No, okay. Okay. So you, we have no reframed, trace whatsoever. You've reframed everything I was thinking about in a in a really cool way. And and th- we at, don't know. Looking at how we are, how repetitive we are as human beings with every generation of where we have since we have archives of it yeah uh, you know i'm sure there's a point where we didn't have enough language but from the moment we did we probably did have some kinds of those kinds of conversations at some point yeah and as our brains developed and grew and all of that kind of thing where i was going originally sorry i destroyed before you before you finished yeah it was brilliant (laughs) but this is why we have these conversations because (laughs) I was going quite nicely developing a tangent and then you just kicked on something else, which is what these conversations are about. But what I was going to, where I was going to develop it was agricultural revolution, industrial revolution, sure. those kind of revolutions, printing press, the shallows, how, how much our brains have developed. And I know you, you finished reading the shallows and you really enjoyed it as well. The, how much our thinking has changed so that having a career is all, is, it's really like just I'm a cog in society. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, the, I mean that's that's been well. The sorry, were you finished with your point? I think so because I can't. I've lost what it was, but it doesn't matter anymore because the, yeah, I was like, that, I didn't feel like it was finished. It wasn't just if a we go back to the if if I go back to the question, is it is building a career in something important and worthwhile? The feeling. Going try. I think what I'm trying to say is to answer the question. Going beyond feeling like you're just a cog in society is worthwhile because I've certainly felt over for a long time. Actually, not for a long time. Un- until we started having these conversations, until I started writing and creating and really thinking seriously about using the internet and blogging and putting videos together, I've really felt that my job and my career was just a cog in a big fat machine sure and the and it was only when when i read the shallows and started thinking about things on a much bigger time frame i realized that it it is all made up it everyone's trying to figure out make it up as they go along and figure it out as they go there's no clear answer to everything but i th- i think where i wanted to end that question that would, the point i wanted to end with was it, wouldn't it have been so much easier if we were hunter-gatherers? Maybe. I mean, a lot of people do operate like that. And the kinds of conversations we're having, there's a lot of circle with it, a lot of circles and people where it's not particularly uh, wanted or, uh, or even appreciated. And when, when you were talking about the Industrial Revolution, and even though I said I interrupted your argument to say I'm sure there's some hunter-gatherers that would have had those kinds of conversations, but there's also, for every one of those conversations, a lot of other people going, you know, imagine a peasant in the Middle Ages or somebody, a kid in a factory in the Industrial Revolution starts telling his mom, like, is this all there is? And what if, what if? You know, I would build a career that just get tapped on the back of the head and just like shut up and go pick up your to do the next piece of work, just rather than you know daydreaming. Just stop talking nonsense. No, just do the thing they this, have to do. This is and perfect. Everybody because... had their role. Typically, uh, you know, the peasant doesn't really think about anything else. You just go and do the next thing. You just and then you come back at home and you, uh, you know, you just do what there is to get done because that's how things are. Uh, maybe some people yeah. would, would wonder, but that also just comes back to education. Now there's more education and there's a lot more, um, which is like part of the, 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 the context that we live in now is that there is a career to be had and that there's a, an opportunity for most, if not all of us to have it. Mm. Now there's also a whole mm. section of people that are, that are going to go like, stop talking nonsense, just go to work and shut up, get things done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Uh, so 
now would it be simpler for hunter gatherers just it's very simple like the, i'm circling back to the example i gave at the beginning go work at mcdonald's and flip burgers you don't have to worry about it mm -hmm. it's mm -hmm. not the same thing as hunter gatherer but if you want to do hunter gatherer you can go i don't know what you can do but I, i'm trying to make a really I, i'm not sure it works really well but i'm trying to make a relationship between what it seems like you were referring to of a simpler time yes that was what i was referring to yeah so there's no it's not foolproof but there is a certain amount of there's a lot of people that live a simple life of like going to work and just getting their salary in and living you know with that now a, a lot of those there's dynamics that are beyond the lives of the people there that are not the same as the hunter-gatherer but then again, there's weather when you're living as a hunter-gatherer that you don't know what's going to happen. So it seems like simpler times, but there's a lot of cold. There's a lot of like, you don't know where the berries are. You just have to, and then, you know, the, the, you were hunting something and then a lion mauled you instead. So that's like, didn't go according to plan. And then suddenly you're bleeding to death. That didn't work out. <laughs> you know, <laughs> that happens. <laughs> you're like, well, that wasn't so simple. <laughs> True. True life isn't simple but but, but, the, but there are times where and i talk about that with my big brother who's in sri lanka and mm. you know wonders about being in the tropics living on the beach having food there was it a simpler time do we need all this stuff do we need phones and the, all that which is great it's great to wonder about and we don't need you don't need that much ultimately either even though society tells you that you need a lot and once you're in it there's a lot that you need and uh, and you know there can be for a lot of people to have a simple job go to work come back enjoy your mm -hmm. family have a hobby or mm -hmm. two and get mm -hmm. better at your hobby rather than like aspire to get better at your hobby or to enjoy your hobby do your job right enjoy the, the customer the co-workers whatever but you're also part of larger forces so for example like to just keep on the burger flipping example if McDonald's corporate decides that that thing is not worth it anymore, or they have a robot to replace you or they close the location, you're, you're at the mercy of that. So you don't really have much, but that's the same for any kind of job, like for a lot of jobs. Uh, so, so is it, so any to circle back to the question, cause I think we've, we've been talking for an hour ish. No, we have is I mean, the question. So the question is, yeah. Is building a career in something important and worthwhile? So we've we've looked at the question from a number of different perspectives. I think to finish off, the most important and the one thing that we mentioned a little bit is to join the dot forward, and you don't know what's going to happen. Even though mm. we, the only thing we have is our past, and that's what we base ourselves on. And mm. there's an enormous amount of pressure on you as a young, if you're a young person watching. But then again, there could be an enormous pressure regardless of your age mm. to build a, an important and worthwhile career. So spending a bit of time to think about what it is that you want and uh, knowing that that's going to change and understanding or be, being, you know, giving yourself a break for the fact that actually you're still, you don't know. Hmm. And it seems like others say that because they want what's best for you. But when usually they say that they want what's best for themselves because that's what they're referring to. Hmm. And we automatically assign to others our wants, our needs, our, because that's our main, our main point of reference is that. So in the case of your father, stability. Yeah. Now, stability is also not in the, not in the, we're not in living in stable times. We know that since last year. It was true before, but it's even more true now. Yeah. These are not stable times. So it's normal to look for stability. It's completely mm -hmm. human to look for shelter, to look for safety, to look for all those things. Mm -hmm. But, um, but regardless, I think yeah, just look for look for what's important to you, and what would be worthwhile to you. And also, just like what's the best thing that you can do now, and and that one way or another, to get there, you're going to have to put yourself at risk or open up, mm -hmm. uh, and and appreciate that you're going to fail at what you what you want. You're not going to get be, it immediately. You might fail first. You might fail again. Be willing to do the hard work. And I mean, this is and the hard cliche, thinking. totally cliche, but if you don't, you know, you don't succeed if you don't try. That whole thing of that Jordan, like, you know, failed a lot more than he succeeded and et cetera. So going out there, looking at what's important and worthwhile for you makes it worth building a career for. 
And there you go. Thank you. You've done See you again. next week for another question about career, presumably, yeah? Now yeah. I'm wondering if we should have a sign-off. Should we have a sign-off? Or that was our sign-off, I guess. That was the sign-off. Season yeah. three, Teaching Tangents, our overarching theme of career. Join us where we take apart another question. Oh, yeah, and send us questions. And send us questions, yeah. If you've got a question about career burning question that you want us to take apart and examine from our viewpoint send an email to hello at james yeah. so that villain doesn't see it yes. and i get it and we'll go from there yeah and uh, tell us how you enjoyed it give us a five yeah. star review with a note on your favorite listening podcast listening device or on youtube as well and that's about it we'll see you soon see you soon or, thanks villain thanks james